Welcome to this short flow and a warm up for crow pose. We're going to have a bit of a play with it today. So if you've never done crow pose before or if you have and you're working on it, then this is for you. You're going to need perhaps a couple of blocks which will help or you could use a couple of similar size books. And then also a blanket or cushion is a good idea for this practice as well. So we're going to begin kneeling or seated and um, we're going to take three grounding breaths and then do a little bit of prep work before we take our crow pose. We're going to warm through the core and the wrists mainly. So bring yourself to a comfortable seat. seat. You may sit on a block if this is a little bit uncomfortable, feel, um, a little bit uncomfortable for you right now. So we're going to bring the hands into the lap or onto the legs and flicker the eyelids closed. And take a breath in through the nose and out of the mouth, soft sigh. And again, breathe in through the nose, out of the mouth, soft sigh. And one more, breathing in and soft sigh out. And take a couple of rounds of breath now through the nose if you can. Just feeling the shoulders and the hips sink in, letting yourself arrive on your mat. Notice your body in space. And your legs or feet in contact with the ground. And take one more breath in and out and then gently blink the eyelids open and we're going to come through to an all fours position so bringing our hands underneath the shoulders the knees underneath the hips and we're going to start with some wrist circles so as you inhale draw the shoulders a little bit over the wrists and then as you exhale gently circle it back and this doesn't need to be a massive move to begin with, just warming up the wrist, keeping it comfortable and moving with your breath, inhaling forwards, exhaling back. I'm going to take it in the other way. Inhaling forwards and exhaling back, circling in the other direction. And you might find the circles can get a little bit bigger as the wrists warm up. And then pause through stillness, starting to work through the spine as you inhale, dip the belly down, tailbone flares out, draw the heart forwards through to cow. As you exhale, tuck tailbone in, draw up the front body, round the spine, tuck chin into cats. Inhale, ripple and flow the heart forwards. And exhale, press and round. Inhale, through to cow. And exhale, front body lifts to cats. One more like this. Inhale, heart forwards. And exhale, press away. Come back to a neutral and spin the right fingertips around as far as they'll go. And maybe that's so that they point towards the knee, but if they don't go quite that far, that's okay. And let's take a couple of rounds of cat cow like this. Inhale, draw the heart forwards. Exhale, press and round. Notice the different sensations here as you inhale, heart forwards to cow. And as you exhale, cat. And pause, spin the right fingertips back round and go straight to the other side. Draw the left fingertips pointing as far round towards the knee as is comfortable for you. And as you inhale, heart forwards to cow. Exhale, press the ground away, tuck in chin and tailbone. One more, inhale, and exhale, and then come back through neutral, spin the left fingertips back around, and from here, walk yourself down onto the forearms. So you're in this mini little crouch, 
And we're just going to work through a little bit of protraction and retraction of the shoulder blades. So when we crow, we want a nice rounded, compressed spine like that. So as you inhale, it's almost like you're trying to do a cow here. Draw your heart as far forwards, flow out the tailbone. And exhale, press, create as much space in between the shoulder blades as you can. Inhale, heart dips. And exhale, press. And take a couple more. See how much you can take this into the shoulder blades as opposed to the tailbone. Notice that difference as you press the ground away. That's the shape we want in acro. And then draw yourself back to your neutral. Bring yourself back onto your hands. Bring them underneath the shoulders. And tuck the toes. As you exhale, downward facing dog. And you might like a bit of a wiggle here, easing into the hamstrings. Take any movements that feel good in your body. So you might pedal. You might shake or nod the heads. And then settle, find some stillness. Knees can stay bent, heels can stay lifted. Create as much length in the spine as you can. Spinning biceps forwards, triceps back. And then step in the feet together at the back of the mat. As you inhale, Sweep the right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Exhaling to bend the knee and stack the hip open. So reaching the right knee to the sky, squeezing the right heel down towards the glute. Press out of the left shoulder. Take another breath in here. And then as you exhale, draw the right knee towards the left tricep, drawing the shoulders over the wrist. Squeeze that knee in as high up across the body as you can. And then as you inhale, send the hips back to the sky, restack the leg in your three-legged dog. And we're going to flow through that a couple of times. So as you next exhale, draw the right knee across the body towards the left tricep, press the ground away. And then inhale, sweeps the right leg up and back, restacking. One more, exhale, right knee across the body to the left tricep, and inhale, sweeps the hips high, hips restack. As you next hex, exhale, draw the right leg wider, stepping it outside of the right hand. And you might like a little bit of movement here, as we ease into the hips. You might need to readjust the legs if your step forwards wasn't so big. And that's okay, working with our bodies, accepting where we are. And then pausing here. Now, if you have some space, you might, you might just stay here. This might be enough for you into your hips. And if you have the space, you might bring the forearms down. If they don't quite reach the ground, then bring in some blocks and draw your elbows onto the blocks. Left knee can lower, maybe even tuck the left toe, and breathe here. And one more breath. And then if you came any lower onto the elbows, work yourself back. Just release out that block if you took it and tuck the left toes under, lift up the back knee. As you inhale, sweep the right leg to the back of the mat, high plank. Breathe in here. And then exhale, send the knees down to the mat and curl the toes, slow lower, keeping the elbows tucked in. Lead with the chest. See if you can resist that final drop. And as you arrive on your belly, bring your hands either side of your face. Gaze down, and as you inhale, baby cobra. So lift up the chest, peel just a rib or two away, no weight in the hands, and exhale, curls you back down. Hands under the shoulders, inhale, press to tabletop, exhale, tuck the toes, hips high, downward facing dog. And take a breath here. 
And then step the feet together at the back of the mat. Inhale, left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. And exhale, bend the left knee and stack the left hip open. Left knee reaching to the sky, the left heel squeezing towards the glute. Press out of the right hand. Take a breath in. And exhale, send the left knee to the right tricep across the body. Shoulders over the wrist, press the ground away. Inhale, hips lift high, three-legged dog, restack the left leg. Exhale, left knee to right tricep, press the ground away. And inhale, sweep it back to your three-legged dog. One more. Exhale, left knee to right tricep. Inhale, sweeps it back. And as you exhale this time, big step forwards with the left hand to outside. Left foot to outside of the left hand. And adjust as needed, bringing it forwards. You might like some movement here. Forwards and backwards, side to side. Maybe stillness feels better for you. And if you are moving, come to stillness now. You can stay here, breathing into the hips, or bring your elbows down onto blocks or onto the ground. Maybe the right knee lowers and curling the toe. Spend a couple of breaths here. And then if you did, work your way down onto the elbows. Replant the palms. Tuck the right toe under and lift up the right knee. Inhale, left leg sweeps back. High plank. Exhale, knees down and curl the toes. And slow lower all the way to the mat. And draw your hands underneath your shoulders. So you can repeat baby cobra from before. Or hands under the shoulders as you inhale. Press through the hands now to lift the heart. Tuck the shoulder blades onto the back body. And as you exhale, curl it down. Inhale, tabletop. And exhale, downward facing dog. Mm, take a breath. And then as you exhale, lower the knees to the mat. And walk the hands in, coming back to your kneeling position. So from here, we're just going to work through one more core drill. And you may find your blocks help you here. So we're going to place them either side of the knees. And we're going to do some lalasana prep, which is a very tough core move. But it trains that compression that we need, which is core strength to lift um, in our crow pose. So bring your blocks so that they sit just behind your knees and then draw your hands onto those blocks. Now as you inhale, think cat with your body. So press the ground away, separate the shoulder blades on the back body. And then as you exhale, draw the knees high into the chest, keeping the hips low and the toes low. And breathe, hold, three, two, one. And then we're going to release, bringing the uh, legs back down. Take your hands, interlace the fingers, and just ease that out. And take a few figure of eights. And we're just going to do that one more time. So bring your hands back onto the blocks. Fingertips pointing forwards. And then as you inhale, cat with the upper body. Separate the shoulder blades. Exhale. Knees into the chest. Hips stay low. Toes stay low. And hold. Three. Two. And one. And release. Bring your hands back up. Maybe interlace them the other way this time. So opposite thumb. Give them a little circle. Now, as we take crow pose or play with crow pose, please make sure that you have a blanket or a cushion to hand, especially if you are not so confident with the pose. 
So we're going to have this here as a little crash pad, build it up as much as you need to. Now a lot of people with a little, little bit of practice have the strength for crow pose. The key thing is, try not to lift the legs. What we're going to do instead is look forwards and lean forwards. So we'll bring our hands down about shoulder width apart. Then what we'll do is we'll lift ourselves up so that we're crouching, so the heels lift. Now there's a little space if you have a feel that's a kind of like a flat area on the back of your arm and your knees can rest there. Some people find that taking the knees wider than the arms can be a nice place to start as well. Remember your crow pose will not look like mine. It doesn't have to look like mine. It's what feels okay in your body, strong and stable. So from here, we're then gonna lift up the hips and tuck in the knees into that flat area. From there, we bend the elbows, so think chaturanga arms if you practice chaturanga. Rather than lifting the feet here, we're gonna look forwards, lean forwards, transfer the weight into the hands. Eventually, the toes may drift off. You might bring a heel up. You might bring the other heel up. Keep looking out, gripping with the fingertips squeezing the elbows in and eventually coming back down. So have a little play now, breathing with it. As I said, it's all about looking forwards, leaning forwards. So hit pause if you need to. We'll have one last play together in crow pose. Rounding through the upper body, thinking cat, bending the elbows. And whenever you're ready, bringing the feet back down, hip distance. And lift up the toes so you can slide your hands underneath with the palms up. So knees can stay nice and bent here. Let the head hang low, just releasing those wrists. and then lift the toes back up, release the hands. Draw yourself all the way back down to a kneel. We're just doing, we're gonna do a couple of heart lifts. We do a lot of compression when we do crow and core. So we're now gonna open back up, take your hands behind your back, interlace the fingers. Inhale, send the heart forwards, squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back body. Keep a little tuck of the tailbone so this all comes from the upper part of the spine. And then as you exhale, release. And one more, so you can repeat that one or you might bring your fingertips down behind you now. As you inhale, lift up the heart, squeeze the shoulder blades onto your back body. Again, you can stay here or lift the hips as well. And breathe space through the heart, through the front of the hips. And then exhale, coming back down back to where we started. Drawing the hands into the lap, closing off the eyes. Breathing in. And out. Releasing anything that happened or didn't happen in our practice. Come back to this whenever you need. Stay in Shavasana or meditation for as long as you like. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste.